Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and these are 10 Japanese films from the 1920s and 1930s that you should watch. Let's do it. A Page of Madness, 1926. This is a horror-drama hybrid, directed by Tenozuke Kinugasa. So this was the first film that I reviewed in my Asian horror playlist back when I started this YouTube channel. A Page of Madness is a silent film about a man who takes a job at an asylum with hopes of freeing his imprisoned wife. The scoring consists of ambient sounds and is rather creepy. The grainy video quality and bizarre experimental camera work only add to the strange mood, especially the dancing scenes and shots from the patient's points of view. There are no intertitles used, so the film uses imagery alone to demonstrate the madness of the characters. Absorbing from start to finish, this is totally worth seeking out. The Water Magician, 1933. This is a drama romance directed by Kenji Mitsoguchi. An independent young woman with a famous water juggling act in a traveling carnival troupe falls in love with an orphaned carriage driver. Now she offers to pay for his education and he in turn promises to return to her as a great man and marry her. However, some financial hardships during a long winter make things more difficult than expected. Well, this is a silent film, with the version, uh, but the version I saw had a lively, benchy-style narrator that made this film a unique viewing experience. It's on the melodramatic side, but charmingly so. Very cool stuff that's one of my personal favorites from Mitsoguchi. I Was Born But, 1932. This is a comedy directed by Yasujiro Ozu. Now, after moving to a new neighborhood in school, two young boys deal with local bullies, and they must also come to terms with the fact that their father is a relatively unimportant man within his company. This is a very funny comedy with lots of memorable moments that are packed into its short 90-minute running time. Now, since it's silent, situational humor is used, of course, over any witty dialogue that would be evident in a dialogue-driven film nowadays but it works nicely here. The acting from the brothers is admirable as well. Overall, this is one of the truly great Japanese comedies from the classic era that should be seen by everyone. Wife, Be Like a Rose, also known as Kimiko, 1935. This is a drama that was directed by Mikio Narose. Now, this film tells the story of a young woman who ventures out to find and convince her father to return home after years of living with his mistress. The years of separation have taken uh, its toll on her mother, who continues to wait for the father's return. Now, this is a very well-written film with three-dimensional characters, convincing relationships, and some intriguing plot developments. The acting is excellent and surprisingly natural by everyone involved. Camera work is a bit flashy as well. All in all, an excellent movie with a strong central conflict and gripping dialogue. Undying Pearl, also known as Eternal Heart, 1929. This is a romance directed by Hiroshi Shimitsu. Now, this silent film examines different aspects of modern life through the personalities of two sisters. The elder is in love with a man, but he marries the younger sister, only to find out that she is difficult to deal with. Now, the, this engaging dilemma is supplemented with lots of trendy locations on display. This is a nicely shot and directed film with expert use of framing and lighting, the viewer will come away with this film with a feeling of regret that is communicated through the characters. Humanity and Paper Balloons, 1937. This is a drama directed by Sadao Yamanaka. So the lives of two slum neighbors, one a happy-go-lucky gambler and the other a poor ronin, converge when the two get involved with the affairs of a powerful samurai official and his gangsters. Now this does a good job of showing the plights of common folk during the era and how the elite did nothing to help them, even if they were previously associated with one another. Now this is a uh, dramatic film because the main character misleads his wife about his continuous failings at gaining the attention of a well-off man who could help them financially but simply avoids him all the time. Yamanaka unfortunately passed away at the age of only 28, but his directing talent is evident in this highly acclaimed film. Sisters of the Gion, 1939. 
1936. This is a drama directed by Kenji Mitsoguchi. So frustrated with the endless objectification of women, a young geisha decides to wage psychological warfare against men in an effort to coerce gifts and monetary gain from them. Now, actress Isuzu Yamada is very good with edgy roles specifically, and it's intriguing to watch her run circles around her patrons here. Another notable aspect is how the lead protagonist has a different, a completely different viewpoint of men when compared to her sister, who is also a geisha. This is an interesting film with a very lean running time of 70 minutes. Jujiro, also known as Crossways, also known as Crossroads, 1928. This is a drama directed by Tenozuke Kinugasa. Yes, the 75-minute silent film is from the same director as A Page of Madness. The storyline here is more straightforward, concerning a man and his sister who live in the slums. Now, after an altercation in a bar, their livelihood is placed under even more duress. Now, the entire film is shot indoors or at night, and there are some visually arresting images to enjoy. The viewer will feel some sympathy towards the characters, which creates an emotionally affecting experience. What Did the Lady Forget? 1937. This is a comedy directed by Yasujiro Ozu. An affluent medical professor, Komiya, and his bossy wife, Tokyo, are to look after Setsuko, their highly spirited niece from Osaka. The most entertaining character would have to be the niece in this, who dabbles in smoking and drinking. The true joy of the film is watching the chemistry between Setsuko and her uncle, who basically conspire to have a good time without having to deal with the grumpy old lady. Now, I especially enjoyed the fake lecture sequence in particular, which was pretty funny. Michiko Kuwano is really good in this. It's my favorite performance and role of hers from what I've seen in her filmogra uh, filmography so far. And with a running time of only 70 minutes, this is a charming crowd pleaser that shoots by in a breeze. Sincerity, 1939. This is a drama directed by Mikiro Nanose. Now, this film is about an 11-year-old daughter of a lower-class family who is best friends with a girl from an upper-class family. Now, her mother had a mysterious relationship with her friend's father before they separately married, which is the focus of the storyline. Now, there is definitely some commentary here on social classes, but the true driving force is the warm mood and loving relationships between the girl and her mother, as well as her friend. Acting is very good by everyone, but the young uh, Teruko Kato steals the show in this delightful film that clocks in at only 67 minutes. So there you have it, 10 Japanese films from the 1920s and 1930s that you should watch. The titles for all these films are listed in the description box below. Now, I am not providing availability information in this playlist because, as I've said previously, you know, most of these films I saw years ago and availability has changed over time. You know, my usual method for checking availability is Google, so be sure to seek out any films that seem interesting to you. My guess is that the films that I'm covering in this video are mostly available either on the Criterion channel, YouTube, or other notable streaming sites, or even some physical media releases. Now, if you've seen my last channel update on this uh, YouTube channel, I mentioned that I wanted to do more list videos that are outside of the director top 10s that I've been doing over the past few years. You know, I've done a handful of top 10 films from so-and-so director, right? So, for example, to break away from that a little bit, I uh, posted a video recommending 10 Korean romantic comedies to watch. Well... In like manner, I want to do a more extensive project for Japanese movies. So this video is basically going to be part one of a multi-part series where I will be recommending Japanese movies by decade. So in the next video, I'm going to cover Japanese movies from the 1940s. Then I'll cover the 1950s, 1960s, and so on, up to the present day. Now I'm intentionally limiting myself to only a few films from each director per decade because I do not want this to turn into a love fest of just a handful of directors, right? Uh, you could check out my director top tens for that stuff. For this particular project, I want to get as much variety as possible. So these videos are not meant to be comprehensive. There will be plenty of great Japanese films that will not be on these lists, obviously, but they should provide a nice sampling of Japanese films to explore 
that will span an entire century of filmmaking. So each video I'll put in maybe like 10 movies or possibly 15 movies to recommend at a time. And some decades might get multiple parts. But right now I'm projecting a 16 video series on this that will include 200 Japanese film recommendations when all is said and done. So I'm going to take a little while uh, to complete this, this particular project, but I think it's something to look forward to. It's fun to do, and it should be a helpful resource for people who want to explore Japanese cinema from the classic era to the present. So you'll have a nice sample size of 200 films to get a good, a good feel of, of Japanese cinema over the last 100 years. So, as always, we'll see you next time.